Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. And yesterday, again, walking and talking on the beach here in beautiful Phuket, Thailand. Uh, again, filming with the Osmo DJI Pocket 3 with a new DJI mic setup. Still getting used to the system. Normally, I'm looking at my telephone. Now, I'm looking like at a very tiny screen. But hopefully, you enjoy the new quality of the image and the sound, guys. So, let me know a comment down below if you like it. In today's video, of course, talking about four amazing Bitcoin jars, an amazing trading tip, a beautiful travel tip. Yes, of course, also the news because some huge news happening out there. Also, of course, some live advice. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you what is happening to Bitcoin today. Bam! The first chart for the day, guys, of course, is the monthly chart. As we just closed the monthly candle, monthly chart, every candle is a month. So you can see this candle opened at 34,667. The high was 38,450. The low 34,102. And the closing was at 37,790. Beautiful. We just opened that new candle, the December candle. Uh, we are nearing that red line over here. Yes, that is, of course, the halving. Now, I'm going to zoom out on this chart because I've been sharing this chart already now for almost two years. And now I'm going to show you again why this chart was so perfectly made by myself almost two years ago, guys. Yes, I will put some feathers on my own ass. Why? Because look what I told you at that time. I put a shitload of numbers on that chart. And I told you at that moment, every time, guys, when we see that downward green trend line, look here on the left, and we break that, that's the start of the bull market. Every time. We did it here as well. 2019, we broke it, bam, bull market. Now, here, I told you exactly that moment when we broke it, bull market. But now we're just gonna look at the days, guys. Look at the days. From here, the bottom to the top, it took in total 35 bars. Next market, here, bottom to the top, bottom to the next top, 34 bars. Here, this market, the bottom over there, if you would take it to the top, another 33 bars, 35, 24, 33 bars, we would end somewhere in August 2025. Now let, let's look at the next number. Bottom to the halving, took exactly 18 bars. Bottom to the halving, 17 bars. Bottom to the halving, again, exactly, oh, one more, 17 bars. Bottom to a new all-time high, new all-time high doesn't mean that it's going to be the bull market top it's going to mean that we are breaking the level over here of was it again 69 000 us dollar now bottom to a new all-time high took 27 bars 821 days here next bull market the bull market of uh, you know 2021 that you know from the bottom to the high took 24 bars 730 days to a new all-time high now, from the bottom that we saw to a new autumn high, if it would take 23 bars, 27, 24, 23, a little bit less, then the new autumn high would be somewhere in October 2024. So you still have the time till October 2024, if it is up to these charts, that we will see a new autumn high above that 60K. It can also take 27 or 24 bars, you know, then it will take all the way here, 24 bars, it will take till take to November, and if it will take 27 bars, it will take all the way to February. So you need to play around a little bit with these numbers, but if you look at the chart, it was every time around the same amount of numbers. And now the most important number is on top. From the halving, the red line, to the next stop, took 12 months in the first bull market. From the halving to the next stop, took 17 months to the next bull market. From then the halving in 2020 to the next stop took again 17 months. Do you see the pattern? Halving 2016, 17 months later, top in 2017, December. Halving 2020, 17 months later, top October 2021. If you count November 2021, it's 18 months, of course. Halving now, April 2024, Let's say plus 17 months, where will we end up? September 2025. 
So this chart is telling me that the top of the bull market will be somewhere in September, August 2025, if we keep in line with all the numbers that we see here on the chart. Beautiful chart. And a very important thing that we can see now is that that orange line over here is crossing that blue line. And every time when that orange line crossed that blue line, guys, look back in these green circles, first time the orange line crossed the blue line, bam, bull market. Second time that orange line crossed that blue line, bam, bull market. And now let's zoom in again. Third time that orange line crossed that blue line, bam, bull market. So the halving, in my honest opinion, we will be between 40 and 50k. And from there, we will make a new all-time high in October 2024. And from there, we will take it to a complete new bull market top somewhere in the mid of 2025. If you want to analyze the chart a little bit more, I will put it here exactly so you can beautifully pause the video, screenshot it, share it all over Twitter, because that will, of course, drive some new followers maybe to me. Now, let's quickly jump into some more beautiful charts over here. This is the first one, guys. This is the short-term chart. And on the short-term chart, you can see, yes, we have this flat upper trend line. We have the rising lower trend line. We were in uptrend before, and we see some consolidation at the moment. So that looks like this pattern over there. It's an ascending triangle continuation pattern. So the normal move that we would do is, yes, pull back a little bit, maybe here to the 36,000 US level. And then we would see a breakout towards the end of this triangle. And that breakout normally is a continuation of the trend. So normally that would be a breakout up to those levels that I've been telling you all the time, towards 44K, maybe even to, to, to 48K, guys. So these patterns on the charts, there's a daily chart, are very interesting patterns and mostly are continuation patterns. Next chart, zooming out again. This is a very interesting chart I found on Crypto Crew University Twitter, very good YouTube channel as well. You can see that every time when that blue line crosses here, that red line and the white line on the bottom, the horizontal white line, we see the bottom and from that moment, bam, we see a bull market. And yes, we can go above and come down again. These are the pullbacks. And then from the pullback, when we do it again, the second time during bull markets, phase two of the bull market, huge run. First time, here, 3,000 to 14,000, pullback. Second time, again, making that cross again above that Y line, bam, 850%. Here, here again, in between that beautiful run, and again here now. First time, bottom, we leave the bottom, beautiful run at the moment already 47 percent we are pulling back and we are again going up and maybe we could pull back one more time just like we see here a double pullback or here a double pullback but this is a beautiful chart that shows us so yes after that first little pump we will get a retrace maybe another small retrace but it will be a huge pump after to a new all-time high beautiful chart. now if it is up to plan b he makes it even more interesting is my face on the right place? I need to put it in the right place now. Because plan B is stating, listen guys, it could be the last time ever that we see a price below 35K. And why is he saying that? Because if you look at the Bitcoin valuation models over here, you can see that the Bitcoin valuation based on difficulty hash rate has increased to 35,000 US dollars. In his honest opinion, it could mean that apart from the possible black swan events or short-term volatility, based on the dollar per kilowatt um, arbitrage fundamentals, Bitcoin will never go below 35k again. Beautiful number. Let's hope it will never go below 35k again because I'm already all in. You should have already been all in. And if you're not all in, you will get a small opportunity now, maybe after this small pullback, or if you go to 44k and pullback, but it could mean we will never go below 35k. For me, below 30k is almost impossible by now. Beautiful how you can see these uh, lines playing out here, the time, the stock to flow, the difficulty, how they every time stay close to each other, move up, move down, and how that is playing this beautiful dance between these three beautiful um, valua valuation models, guys. And there will be a time that the red line will be maybe above the blue line again and the light blue line, 
beautiful, beautiful child. Now, here, the last child, also plan B, again, a very interesting child, showing you very clearly where we are at the moment when it comes to the stock-to-flow model. Uh, the stock-to-flow model, we are darkish blue. Look to the left, what happened after darkish blue? What happened here after darkish blue? And what happened there after darkish blue? We got red and orange. We got red and orange. We got red and orange. And here again, we will see red and orange. And that doesn't mean that it's a temperature, but that's the months until the next halving. So it will be less and less months until the next halving. And every halving is making sure that the Bitcoin price will bam go up again. Are we going to go up to this gray line, this halving? No, I don't believe so. I think we'll go a little bit lower somewhere at that area over there. Uh, beautiful between 100 and 140 k but that there would still be an amazing bitcoin price again just like it did in the previous bull cycle guys that were the charts for today yes these were amazing charts guys of course telling you to zoom out in the long term but also in the short term we can see the ascending triangle patterns are, continu are continuation patterns which means normally when we hit that top level a few times and then pull back one more time to that upward trend line we will break out to the top a continuation pattern beautiful job guys um, hopefully you enjoy them give the video already a thumbs up if you enjoy the charts now let's quickly jump into the trading tip well now this is the first time ever i see somebody with a mountain mic on the beach guys beautiful and with this camera i can turn the screen and then the screen records the other side beautiful and you can see if I do it three times, bam, it goes back again to me. But that's beautiful, even people biking here on the beach. Biking on the beach, bitcoins, booty, biking, beach, whatever. Now, let's jump into the trading tip, guys. The trading tip for today, guys. Yes, we have been talking all the week about candlestick patterns. So today, again, a candlestick pattern. We're going to talk about the morning star in the early morning and the evening star in the evening, guys. No, that's not true. The morning star and the evening star do not happen in the morning or the evening. The morning star is a reversal of a bearish market. So if we can see a bearish market, a downtrend, and then we see a morning star, that means the chart is going to go up again. You can see here on the image what a morning star is and the evening star is of course the opposite. When we are in a bullish market and we see an evening star, we can expect of course a reversal bearish. Please take a look at that image. How does a morning star and an evening star look? So we have two long bodies. That's like the, two, the candle before and the candle after have a long body. And the morning star candle um, is a small candle with a tiny body. The body is mostly not overlapping those long bodies and we have a large wick. So it's like a star. The evening star is when it happens on the top. Bullish market, evening star, bam, we go bearish again. So that was the trading tip for today. Always look to the charts. If you see a morning star or an evening star, and you know that there is a huge possibility of a reversal of the market. Let's jump into the next part. The travel tip for today, guys, is a very interesting one because what I normally do if I visit a certain beautiful place in the world is I read a history book about it, like a history summary, or for example, I watch a documentary about it. Because if you then visit the place after, it, it is even way more intensive than if you just visit it without all the knowledge. Because then you need to take a guide and the guide will be a huge group and you can't ask the questions that you want, all that stuff. But if you watch a documentary before, for example, if you're gonna visit a temple in Thailand, maybe just first um, Google the temple, read the summary of that temple, and then when you have read that summary, then visit the temple, that you exactly know what is the story behind the temple. It makes the trip way more beautiful. It just gets you a little bit more excited to see what you really want to see. The best example for me was, for example, when we visited um, the Killing Fields in Cambodia. No, Killing Fields is not like something very uh, positive or very beautifully vibed to visit, because everybody told me, Didi, you will experience a really negative vibe on the Killing Fields. But I want to understand what happened on the Killing Fields. Who is Quad? Who are all these people that we are always talking about? So I started to watch a few documentaries, also read some information here and there on the internet, and then I went and visited the Killing Fields. And if you visit it like that, and you see that big tree in the middle of the Killing Fields, of which you read where they used that big tree for, what they did with kids and that big tree, then you will really understand how 
hot the times were with the people at those times at those killing fields, guys. So the travel tip for the day, guys, not only if you uh, visit like uh, terrible places, but also if you visit a beautiful place, uh, please watch a documentary or read some information before you go there so you really understand what are you looking at at that moment. And at the same time, you also educate your children. You can ask them, please watch this documentary with me together so that you understand what we are going to visit. Of course, they will first say, no, I want to play on the PlayStation, but then you just force them, you say, hey, yo, you watch the documentary because else you are not able to visit it with us. And then they will watch it, and then, then when you visit that place, they will be like, ah, that's so cool. When we went to the Angkor Wat in Cambodia, for example, we watched also Tomb Raider, Lara Croft, with the kids, because that was recorded there. And then they were like, wow, is that movie really recorded there? Yes, that's really recorded here. Oh, let's go there and find this treasure. So, yeah. That's how you motivate the kids to visit those traditional sites like the Angkor Wat, for example. Now, that was the travel tip for the day. Let's jump into the next part. The news for today, guys, really cool news. Australian tax data is showing us now that there is a growth of 400% in people saving for their own pension funds do-it-yourself pension funds these super mega pension funds in Australia so people are saving more and more in those pension funds in cryptocurrency there was a 400% rise there are 612,000 uh, pension funds in Australia that's seen a 400% rise in the usage of crypto that is insane people are having do-it-yourself pension funds and yes they are now including mainly Bitcoin massively guys there is now more than 990 million Australian US dollar in crypto in those pension funds. Do it yourself pension funds. So this means that the people in Australia are slowly starting to say goodbye to all those government pension funds and all those other centralized pension funds and now are doing do it yourself pension funds and they are clear and they are including more than 990 million Australian dollar worth of cryptocurrency already. This is only going to increase, guys. People start to understand that Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century. People start to understand that Bitcoin is a store of value. In Australia, now people are starting to understand that their pension funds, that the governments and all the other companies are giving them, are shit. They're only giving 6% a year, if you're lucky. Bitcoin is giving you 40% a year, without being lucky. If you're lucky in the next couple of years, maybe 400% because you're in the middle of the bull market. So I think that this development of pension funds is taking place all over the world. And at the moment we will see a spot ETF really approved, I think this is going to increase way more because that will give the possibility for all those pension funds worldwide now to officially, legally accumulate Bitcoin into that pension fund as well. And then all those peoples having pension funds at those companies don't even realize, but probably their pension fund is including Bitcoin as well. I think in Norway, the government is even including Bitcoin in the pension fund of the government for all the people over there. I think it's Norway. I don't know for sure anymore. I think I read something about it, that the Norwegian government pension fund has already included Bitcoin into that pension fund already for years. I don't know for 100% that it is sure. So if you are from Norway and you know that your government is saving um, your pension funds, a tiny bit of that also in Bitcoin, let me know down below. Let that also be a wise lesson for all of you guys out there in the Netherlands or Germany or Portugal or wherever in the world that you live, guys. Yes, you can also do it yourself. You don't need to depend on all those centralized companies where if it comes to a pension fund. You can do it yourself. You can create your own pension fund. And in my honest opinion, Bitcoin should be the biggest part of that pension fund because that will give you the most return on investment and that will give you an early pension. You don't need to wait 30 to 50 to 60 years before you can get that pension result. With Bitcoin, you will get the result almost 10 times faster than a traditional pension fund. So yes, I would go all in with Bitcoin if it comes to a do-it-yourself pension fund. Then again, I'm just a guy walking the beach, talking about Bitcoin and blockchain in life. So don't take everything too serious from me. That, of course, was my financial disclaimer because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a financial person that proves he is right. 
Yes, by doing so. Yeah, I'm walking the walk and not talking the talk. So if you want to walk the walk when it comes to pension funds, do it yourself, buy yourself a shitload of Bitcoin, go all in on Bitcoin, keep them for the next two years, sell them a little bit at the top, buy them again a little bit back at the bottom in 2026, 27, write that beautiful new bull market then again, all the way up to 2029, 30 guys. And yes, exit again, and then you're finished. Then you have your whole pension fund in the next six years finished for life. Now, that's my tip. Now, let's jump into the next part. Turning around, guys, for the last part of the video, I didn't get the time this morning to read all the questions, so I'm not gonna answer a question of today, but I'm gonna directly jump into the last part, this beautiful life advice. Um, the life advice for today might seem very difficult, but it isn't. You just need to do it. <laughs> That's what I always say, but if you are set your life goals ridiculously high, like ridiculously high, like sky high, star sky high, moon sky high. If you set your goals at those levels and you fail in reaching those goals, you will probably still fail higher than other people's success. Because most people don't set their goals high enough. They set easy goals, that they are easy reachable because they don't want to feel failure. But I think the most important thing that you should do is set your goals sky high, like unbelievably high, like that you can't even believe so high. And if you fail then, you still end up higher than the goals that most people put there to have success. So it might, it might feel like a failure to you at the end, but you're still higher up than all those people that saw it as a success. And then when that quarter starts to fall and your brain starts to understand, oh shit, my failure is even higher than other people's success, that will then motivate you again to go again to reach that highest goal. And because then you understand, oh shit, I even broke the goals of other people because I set my goals so high, let's try it again. Let's set it even higher and see if I can now reach those goals that I really want to reach. So, the mo so a very important thing in life is don't set your goals too low. Why? You don't trust yourself? You don't trust your own capability of reaching those goals? Why would you set that bar this high if you can set it that high and just keep trying and pushing and training to reach that goal? Believe me, if you reach that goal too early, that goal and that bar were not high enough. The bar and the goal need to be so high, unbelievably high, sky high, to the moon high, that you will never think that you can reach it that's the goals that you need to set. And if you don't reach them and you fail, you probably end up still higher than the people that had success with setting their goals because they set their goals way too low. Easy peasy. And to be very clear, I am not talking about Bitcoin here. <laughs> Bitcoin, you need to be realistic. Don't set the goal of Bitcoin now on 100 million because you saw the guy on the beat saying, yeah, set your goals sky high. I'm, telling, I'm talking now about personal goals, your goals like the goals for you as a human being. I'm not talking about Bitcoin goals. Don't like set them to 100 million and like, I'm only gonna cash out at 100 million. Uh, that doesn't work for Bitcoin. For Bitcoin, we have TA, technical analyze. We can see on the charts when we will start to top out. And if you keep watching my videos, so you should start now with subscribing to this channel, subscribe, so you'll be notified that I have a new video daily. And if you keep watching these videos, then you will understand when I'm exiting the market, exchanging my Bitcoins into stable coins, because I believe that then the top of the market is there. And you will together with me be dollar cost everything out of the market and beautifully buying back the bear market bottom again somewhere in 2026, 27. But you do need to subscribe to the channel. I also want to reach 100K subscribers. That is not my goal. My goal is 1 million subscribers and above. Unbelievably high, sky high. I probably will never reach 1 million followers or subscribers on YouTube ever, but I will set that as my goal. And if I fail with only 150K followers, I'm still very happy because I probably ended up higher than most people out there, guys. Now. Uh, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, uh, and leave a comment. Please let me know, do you prefer these images with this camera, or did you prefer the iPhone? Is the sound good at the moment? Is the sound better or not better? Uh, I just really appreciate your feedback. I want to understand which setup is working better. To be very honest, 
This works more easy for me because the Osmo is a little bit lighter than the iPhone and I can see my own face and the, st the gimbal and everything is really stable. So the image should be a little bit more stable than the iPhone. And of course the sound of the DJI is the top quality. So it should be better as well. But I wanna hear your opinion about all of that. I'm gonna wish you this first of December. Of course, an amazing month of December with all the celebrations that we will have. Of course, also wishing you an amazing Friday. My Friday is today gonna to start at Maya Beach because there will be a Tulum party, always beautifully organized party with a good vibe. Uh, and a good friend of mine is DJing, Funk D, DJ from the Netherlands, is playing there tonight. So I'm gonna go there and visit and have a couple of drinks and some bites. Yes, uh, in the weekend, I want to do an AMA again, an English one on Saturday and a Dutch one on Sunday. And yes, I need to do it this week. I skipped last week because I was really busy. I needed some off time of the camera and the telephone. But this weekend, I'm gonna do some live AMAs again. Thank you for watching. Hopefully see you tonight at Maya. And if not, see you tomorrow again. Bam.